Yours in Austin? No. All right. What's your address? Hello, Mr. Smith. Did you release the second bond issue in uh, December? Yeah. yeah. All right. Your cat did what, Mrs. Harris? Oh, really? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Listen, Mark, yeah. some crazy stunt man is going to try taking off in an airplane from the top of an automobile this afternoon out in the valley. Sounds like a story. Hold it, Jack. Take off from an automobile on a dirt road. Can he make it? Well. Be a good picture either way. I'll send Mac out with a snapper. Well, it's 40 miles out to the valley. We'll never make today's paper. A wire photo will make it if they pull it by 4 o'clock. Hello, Joe. I'm sending McIntyre and a photographer down. Get started for the valley right away. Yeah, some guy's got a... Speed, the life's blood of a newspaper. Speed, speed, speed. Train, telegraph, airplane, telephone, and radio. Get the story, get it to the paper, get the paper on the street. What time do you start, Marvin? Right now. Better warm up the machine, Ed. Ready for a hookup. Every available development of science and engineering has been utilized to get the story to the reader in the shortest possible time. And now, the latest miracle of news gathering, sending pictures by wire, has lifted the curtain on a new era in newspaper history. Traveling almost as fast as the telephone story, wired photos now go across the continent with the speed of light. Long distance supervisor, I want a clear circuit to the Daily News for picture transmission. Please keep this line clear. Here's the Daily News. Go ahead, please. Wide world wired photo. This is mobile unit number one in the valley. Ready with pictures of stunt car and airplane. Give me your signal. Although it took years to perfect, the technique of sending pictures by wire is comparatively simple. It's not a matter of sending the whole picture at once, but of separating the picture into fine lines, sending those lines over a wire and assembling them at the other end. Let's suppose we have a picture or a pattern which we want to send to another location. And the only way to send it is through a small tube. For our purpose, We'll make this picture on closely wound string. Now, if we start at one end of the picture, taking it line by line or string by string in proper order, we can run the string through the tube and assemble it at the other end, line by line, until we again have the original pattern. That is exactly what we do in wired photo transmission. But we now take the picture apart electrically and translate it into units that we can send over a wire. The units are lines, all of the same width, but of different tones of gray. If we have a given number of lines in a given space, the tonal value of the page, the difference between dark gray and light gray, is determined by the density of the lines. If the lines vary in density, they will form a pattern. Instead of changing lines into a pattern, Wired photo transmission is simply a matter of breaking up the pattern or picture into lines. This process is called scanning. A light is focused on the picture, and as the drum revolves, this light scans the picture from top to bottom on this line. At the same time, the drum is moving slowly along in front of the light so that every part of the picture is scanned. If we stop the drum and look inside the case, then remove the condensing and amplifying apparatus 
leaving only the optical system, we see that as this light strikes each part of the picture, it is reflected back through a lens and an aperture. The aperture allows only one hundredth of an inch of the picture to pass through at a time, so that the picture is scanned in fine lines. The light that gets through the aperture goes into the photoelectric cell. This cell contains a plate made of a metal that has a distinct reaction to light. Electric current will pass more freely through the plate when it is exposed to a lot of light. Very little electric current will pass through if the cell is dark. Therefore, when there is a white spot on the picture, a lot of light is reflected from it into the photoelectric cell and a lot of current passes through the plate. If there is a dark spot on the picture, little or no light is reflected from it onto the plate, and very little current will pass through it. The current is then radiated into the receiver of the telephone set, where the telephone coils pick up the energy or current and send it over the line to the wired photo receiving set. On the receiving machine, these currents are then transferred into corresponding lines on a photographic negative wrapped on a similar drum. Let's stop this drum and look inside. The light that reaches the negative comes from a neon tube into which our current has been fed. A neon tube is used because it will react more quickly to current than an ordinary tube. With lots of current, it immediately becomes bright, and with less current, the tube dims quickly. An opening on this machine, similar to the one on the sending machine, allows only a small amount of light to go through to the negative at one time. The whole story of wired phototransmission, then, is simply this. A lamplight scans the original picture. A white spot on the picture makes a lot of current. Lots of current makes lots of light on the receiving machine, and so exposes the negative more heavily at that point. A black spot on the picture reflects no light back into the photoelectric cell, no current passes over the telephone line, the neon tube remains dim, and the negative is not exposed. We have merely unwound the original by lines in terms of lights and shadows, and wound it up again on the negative. The negative now goes through the regular routine. It is developed and printed, and made into a half-tone engraving called a cut. Put into the form, it goes with the page to be made into a mat, then a mold, then a part of the roaring presses. Before the advent of wired photos, days were required to send a picture from coast to coast by train, and hours by airplane. Now. It is only a matter of minutes after a news event has occurred before newspapers all over the country are carrying pictures that tell the story more graphically and completely than the printed word. Pictures sent from any location by simply picking up a telephone and calling the paper.